<laughs> okay, I think we're recording and we both started by grinning, so that's all right. Yeah, I was just saying, I want, I've had this thing with the students over the past week or two, and I bang on about mm. New Year um, in mm. all my newsletters and, you know, books and everything like this. And there's currently with the Rainbow Warrior students, and the first years are just doing biodynamics. So, New Year is quite important for them, mm. and that. Uh, and mm. so, you know, I sort of thought, towards the end of the meeting last night, so, well, when is New Year? So, when is New Year then? Come on, Chip, when is New Year? Mm. We have a cat. Um, well, <laughs> I can hear that. It, it depends. For me, it, it's interesting because. Um, you have the calendar new year. And then for me, it also depends on which calendar you follow. So in the Southern hemisphere, we're going through, we're, we're heading to midsummer, you're mm -hmm. heading to midwinter. Yeah. Um, the, the seasons are, are opposite each other. Mm -hmm. And so the, for me, the, the sense of renewal comes um, in June, not yeah. in December. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, we are going to get a tail and an ear for a minute. But so oh. calendars are all it's made nice by. There you are, she's he's saying hello to you. Um, calendars are all made by people, aren't they? Yes, yeah. And how long and has it been? Depending people? on the culture you're from, you go with a lunar calendar or a solar calendar. And all the other How long has there been people on Earth? Yes, roughly. Oh. Oh, that's a. Do we want <laughs> five million? A long time ago. We'll go at least hundred thousand years. <laughs> no, five million apparently. Hominids, at least you know they sort of say, "Oh, mm. we don't, we weren't really humans because only Homo sapiens is really human." And you know they'll have to get over that one for a bit because Neanderthals yeah. were even brighter than we were. Yeah. Um, but so five million years, and how old is the Earth? Mm. Four and a half billion. Oh. Four and a half billion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, what actually happens on? for us here in the northern hemisphere um and it happens different down in june for you what happens on the um 21st of december or june hmm. the changing over of of hmm. it's the, it the for sun, december the, for me the it's the shortest shift. Yeah. For, for in December for me, it's the shortest day, the longest night. Yeah. 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 And for me, it's the longest day and the shortest night. Yeah. And then, and it happens the same at your end as it does at my end. Apparently, it doesn't, of course, yes. but apparently the sun rises on the same point on the 21st, no, 22nd, 23rd, and 24th of the month. So it yes. stands still, yes. apparently, which is what solstice means. Mm. And then what does it do on the 25th of the month? It begins its movement again. Yeah. So when's New Year? Mm. <laughs> Astronomically, <laughs> universally, <laughs> cosmically, <Yes>. it's then. <laughs> when okay. when the, uh, the change of our event, so yes, yeah. And of course, for you, that you you your shortest day is the twenty first of June, mm. and for me, it's yes, 21st, 22nd. Ne next uh, Monday. Yeah, today week. Mm. Um, mm. So, I think this is something that's really worth working with, and I mean, it's lovely actually because you're down there living it, and I'm here living it, mm. um, because. It's the same, but it's the other side of the face. Yes. It's like a coin and you've just flipped the, flipped the side mm. because it is the same. But that's mm. when the cosmos thinks it's the new year. 
And it doesn't mm. matter what Pope Julian or Pope Gregory or Pope Arsel or whatever his name is, <laughs> um, or, or some Chinese sage or some Aztec bloke or something, has decided mm. at all. It's, mm. it, this is when it happens. You guys can pick up with us or not. We don't really care. We're going to carry on doing it anyway. Mm. <laughs> and possibly that's a whole, to me, that's a whole big thing because we're not working with the universe. We're not working with the cosmos. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, even more so for us here in Australia, typically what you find is that uh, rather than following the seasonal calendar, for Australians, summer begins the first of, uh, exactly on the first of December. So December 1st is the beginning of Are summer. you hearing this, son? You're remembering this? This is when you're supposed to do summer. Okay, fine. <laughs> well, that's sorted. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> yeah. And spring begins the 1st of September. So, and for me, I, 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 it took me a while to really wrap my head around that because I thought, you're looking at a calendar though, and but the season doesn't move until a little bit later on. So, no, no, no. And they go by the calendar, first of, of September, first of December. I thought, oh, okay, wow, wow. And isn't that just amazing what we humans do? Mm. You know, we want it like this, therefore it's going to be like this. Mm. The fact that it's not actually happening is so like, oh, well, it should be. <laughs> You know, there should be snowdrops now, or there should be roses now, or whatever. And because um, it's the right date. Mm. And, I, I, you know, you know, I used to be a garden designer amongst my many idiotic careers. And I trained at Pershaw College, um, which is very nice. And we had a gorgeous plantsman there. And he was really, really good. And he actually used to go out... Um, out east actually every summer and he'd take students with him as he wanted and he would go plant hunting to see if there was mm. anything new that he could find he wouldn't necessarily bring it back it wasn't quite as bad as the victorians but um he would go and hunt and he really sort of knew about, about plants and so he'd sort of say well the book says that you're um haven't a clue here damned if i know ought to be flowering now um and uh, but mine was flowering last month and he said it's all right the plant hasn't read the book <laughs> very true very true and we don't realize that mm. and that's why we get in a mess the book says mm. it should be so and so mm. i was having a chat with a friend and she sort of said i can't get used to midwinter when you don't need a coat on Okay. <laughs> well, you don't anymore. Global warming has made it. I mean, it really isn't that cold. Hmm. And we haven't hmm. really had a frost yet this year here. Oh, okay. Ah. So it's it's a bit unnerving in some ways. And she said, no, no, it should be cold. And so we have this talk again about, you know, it's, it's actually got nothing to do with that. Hmm. Although we can use that as part of our stuff. It's about what's actually happening in the, in the cosmos, in the universe. Mm. So for you, how are you going to celebrate that, that sort of transition? So how are you guiding your students to actually jump into and to, to work with around that time? Yeah. Um, well, I, I won't tell you what the um, biodynamic lot are doing because theirs is a bit exciting. Um, they, they've, got, they've got to make a fantastic preparation. Um, which they're going to be very busy doing. Um, if you want to read about it, it's it's actually I think in um, in my gardening with the moon and stars book. But um, mm -hmm. otherwise, I'll be talking about that at another time. But no, normally and for everybody, I use those. I use those. I use the two solstices. Well, I use the equinoxes too. But the two solstices, and I use this shortest or longest point. Mm -hmm then the three standstill days mm. and then the sun move on day mm. or move back as it does mm. for me in summer. It does mm. for everybody in summer. Um, and 
so I'll I'll have a fire. I like fires, so I have fires. Mm. You don't have to have a fire, um, but I like them. Mm. And um, I make a, a list, like a, a two column list on the page, it's sort of um, happy, unhappy. I don't like using the words good and bad because mm. they've got so much baggage. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, but what made me happy and what made me unhappy mm. um, and I'll sort of just spend so I start that list and I start that after the fire I, mean, I usually we usually have a um, a drink um, which is usually some form of uh, gin or vodka that I've made by stewing um, local berries in it, you know, which is mm. slow gin, of course, one everybody knows, but uh, I've got a new one this year, you might like it. Um, it's vodka uh, with honey. So it's about, you know, it's, it's say half a liter of vodka and then a quarter of a liter of honey in it and then cinnamon sticks and, you know, tip it around for a bit, but leave mm. it for two, three weeks if you can. Mine will have been two weeks. Mm. And then it's ready to drink. And I mean, I, I opened the top the other day and it's like, <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> so it's, we have something like that. And mm. um, we, we will have a, Paul and I will have a meal together and that sort of thing. And mm. um, like the stove in the living room, which is really nice. Mm. Mm. And, uh, and, and just sit there and go, well, that wasn't a bad year, was it? And um, oh, that bit was a bit bad, you know. And mm. then on the three days, I use my list and I just jot down on them things that come to me that were happy or unhappy. Mm. And I'll sit with it every day for half an hour, something, and um, just see what it else tells me and then jot down anything else, you know, notes or little squiggles that remind mm. me what it said. And at the end of the three days, which, of course, for us up here is what everybody calls Christmas Day, because it's the 25th, it's the day the sun moves on. Guess what? I bet the Christians took it for that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a perfectly good festival. Everybody's using it, doing it. We'll just co-opt it. Why not? Yeah. Everybody else does. Um, so anyway, it's a great day to celebrate. So take the list and again we like the fire and we'll probably have a drink of something else paul's got some um biodynamic champagne this year oh. um mm. so that's going to be nice <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so we're going to have that and um and something to eat obviously and then with a list sit with it again and then i i wrote twist it up and put mm. it in the fire I say thank you very much. And it's always thank you very much, even to the bad bits, because mm. they help me get to hit to the good bits. Mm. And I do that both midwinter and midsummer, so mm. that you start a new half of the year, mm. a sort of renewal. So, what do you do? Actually, it's, it's, it's interesting because in listening to you, um, in many ways, we'll do a very similar thing. Um, I, I enjoy fire. I enjoy fires. <laughs> Lots of people enjoy fires. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. I like them. Um, and and we have a, a chimenea that we use um, in the to burn things in. So it's nice and contained. So if I want to use a large fire, mm -hmm. I can do that. If I want to create a smaller one inside the space, mm -hmm. then it's in, inside of there. Yeah. Um, and so we'll. Cr create a list also. So what I'll do is I'll create lists also. But the difference for me is that it'll be all the lessons that I've learned mm. uh, through yeah. the year. Yeah. And it's things that went up, things that went down. It, it, it's both sides of it that'll be part of that. Yeah. Because I use the, the fire that's a, the, the first one I do to release it all. Mm -hmm. So all the lessons from the year are released. Mm -hmm. And then over the three the, the three days that you spend the, over that time, then I begin looking forward and the things that I would like to possibly open up to or see arrive or to manifest or whatever. 
-hmm. and um, and place that onto the list. And then on the 25th, that gets burned and release that. So I release all my expectations around it. Yes. Uh, yeah. Set the intent to release my expectations and anything that I'll have to, that might actually interfere with its, with it, how it can be manifested. Yeah. So that, that initiating part on the other side of when the, the sun begins to move back, <laughs> move back in the other direction, mm -hmm. yeah. um, then that, that also is the commencing of something new without the expectations around it. Yeah. Yeah. And it has space to grow. Yes. It's not sort of fenced in with, you know, I, I want the snowdrops to come up now or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's a, there's a, well realistically for me there's always that feeling can i get it now what do you mean nice <laughs> oh, tell me about <laughs> it yes <laughs> we, we've all got that so much and mm. i like the um the um clearing and the expectation that's something i i tend to do with bridges and rivers mm. and you go stand in the middle of the bridge mm and looking downstream first so the water's all flowing away from you mm. and you know you've done your list or whatever it is you're collecting and you just i just give it to the water mm. give it to the river and mm. say these are all past the sell by date this is stuff i don't need anymore mm. it's it's over it's gone i don't need to be carrying it i don't need to be worrying about it um, and if I haven't learned the lesson, I'll learn it in a new way next year, kind of thing. And then let that go. And, and it, it really, you really feel it happen. And I, I give it to the students and they all do too. And then when you're ready, turn upstream. So it's all flowing towards you. And you say, I'm here and I'm open and I'm as empty as I can be. And I'm willing for everything that you've got for me to come. And I will take it and I will work with it and help me. And it, it's you sort of come out of that quite hazy, you know, and, and almost almost in tears, well, sometimes in tears, because you know you get across the other side of the bridge. I don't have an easy bridge here. Um well I do, there's one not very far, but it's not a bridge, it's a ford. Um and I did oh. do that last year, standing in the ford last mm. midsummer. And it worked. Um, I've not done it standing in a Ford before. So I might go and do that again this midwinter as well. It, it, yeah, mm. and that's interesting too, because it isn't that magic, because it's fire and water, and we both use fire. Yes. And I'm sure you use yes. water too. Yes. And they're the two yes. things yes. that apparently can't come together. So if you can bring them together, they're magic. Mm. And, uh, yeah. But it's very much that sort of time of renewal. But you've hmm. got something bigger than this happening this year, haven't you? This year, um, over in Uluru, so the center, the heart center of Australia, of the yeah. continent, and, and some people say it's actually the heart of the world, in addition to that, um, there will be a series of different ceremonies and things going on. Mm -hmm. Some that are specifically geared towards, uh, I think, taking advantage of different alignments. So you have the grand conjunction yes. that is taking place, yeah. um, kind of moving into newer or in different signs. Mm -hmm. um, and so all of those things happening around the 21st. Mm. So yeah. at 10.01 in the morning. Um, right. They Let me will... just make a note of that. 10.01. I'll translate it to what that is to me. <laughs> or it might be... Uh, Uluru. It, it might be... Yeah. Or, I, 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 just, I don't get it. Just look at it. But I, it might be... Or 7.28 in the evening. I, I remember there's two different things going on because so two different people had, had um, invited me to something to, to work with them along this. So... It might be 728 even for the for the bigger one um and this is where there'll be lots of uh, indigenous elders mm. who will be doing work on the song lines yes so the very song lines that connect energetically around the world yeah so they're 
the the ushering in and the bringing down actually um so the women i think the the women elders will be working towards um uh, working with the the rainbow serpent yeah to move that the rainbow serpent to, to helping it become the rainbow bridge mm -hmm. to bring energy down from the sun to the earth so being the bridge between the earth and the sun um, and bringing that in through Uluru, just move it out through from that point. So a variety of different uh, traditions, metaphors, uh, narratives around that movement of energy and the connecting points around the world. So I'll be, there's two different groups that, that I've been asked to do some things with. So I'll be doing some things with each of them around that time. Sorry about the racket, it's the cat. <laughs> no, that's fascinating. <laughs> and the song lines, particularly, because mm. well, we have talked briefly about this before, because mm. we have, I think they're everywhere in the world. And I think people mm. call them different things. Um, mm. And my dad always taught, taught it to me as foot dowsing. And when mm. you're out walking, if you focus you can feel and you can feel when you fall off the energy line a little bit and you can feel as you fall as you walk on it and here i mean we're a very wet land as you know we have loads of rivers and things like that and they so often follow rivers here but i know they don't everywhere i think they do in europe a lot but because that's fairly sort of damp and riverish um Hmm. But there are parts of North America where they just don't have any, so they work differently. Or else there are underground hmm. rivers, which there hmm. are indeed, um, particularly yes. in the deserts and that, and there are in the Sahara as well, or under the Sahara. Um, hmm. And the idea of us all working together with the song lines as we know them <clears throat> hmm. feels very good indeed so if nobody minds i'd like to join in with that no i'm sure i'm sure there'll be an openness to it um yes. because we're guided by our so whether that thought resonates so for me when it was mentioned to me um and when the invitation was extended to me it resonated with me and i felt yes yeah yep, this is going to be important for for me yeah. and important because for me, a, a guiding principle is um, people sometimes ask, well, what's what's your purpose? What do you see your life purpose is? And um, I, I like the title of the book uh, by Charles Eisenstein, The More Beautiful World Our Hearts Know Is Possible. Mm, yeah. And, and yeah. So for me, that, that's, that encompasses it my part of my responsibility is helping to manifest the more beautiful world that our hearts know is possible yeah. and so whether i'm doing whether i'm working as a shaman or i'm working as an executive coach or whatever it is that's that that always sits that's within what you're doing and behind yeah yeah yes. what whatever your labels are on the outside in that particular talk now i agree with you um this is to try and for me, it's to try and help the earth be who she wishes to be and not yes. who we're trying to force on her. Yes. yes. Um, that obviously means you've got to help people to, well, for mm -hmm. instance, to start realizing when the new year is and it doesn't have anything to do with people. <laughs> <laughs> that calendar it's not that calendar no darling it's a big one we all live with <laughs> yeah. because all of the indigenous peoples do know that don't they mm. and it's sort of like no you can't do that then it, it, it can't happen the sun's in the wrong place you know is that my husband says the moon's in the wrong quarter and, and it really is <laughs> um it, it you it's like you know you're trying to sow a seed hmm. and i mean if i tried to sow a seed and get it to germinate this week it'd go really the energy's all wrong next yeah. week i might have a chance give me three or four weeks after that and i'll be really going for it 
and it, it's be, because the energies do work like this between mm. the stars and the earth yes and yeah. you can't you can't control them no that's and that's one of the bigger things is is um working with your sensitivity um to the movements of within nature yeah. so for some people there is a sensitivity to i know like with my father who is actually very sensitive to the moon mm -hmm. so particularly when it moved into particular um sections of the sky mm -hmm. that he was he would stay up all night uh he'd be awake all night just because especially the full moon that he'd be awake all night and find that I just can't sleep, I just can't sleep. And, and so the influences of nature around us and the cycles that it goes through mm -hmm. so that when we're doing, uh, when we're doing work, mm -hmm. any form of work, that we're able to ride the appropriate wave and not have it fighting against us as we're seeking to do things. Yeah. Yeah. Which is so often what we do, you know, you go to work nine to five or whatever it mm -hmm. is you do. And that might not be the right cycle for this week. Hmm. Um, so it's like you, you need to have this sort of flexibility. But of course, you know, big, big business economics and all that kind of stuff. Industrialization. Like <laughs> no, we want it like we say, you know, we're ICI, it's going to be like this. Um, no. no. <laughs> And, and people run with it, they buy into it, hmm. instead of saying no. Um, and they're afraid not to buy into it. And that's one of yeah. my jobs, yeah. is to say, actually, the sun's going to come up tomorrow if you tell the boss you can't do that. Hmm. Um, it is, really. But of course, we've been so inculcated with the um, I'm going to die, my kids are going to die, I'm going to lose my house, my wife will leave me, um, <clears throat> that um, we're, we're terrified to risk it and give it a try. Yeah. And, and that's a, the, uh, that's in, in a variety of different ways. Mm. People, whether it's the recognition of movement with seasons or um, in life in general, just culture, the cultures that the, in industrialized in the industrialized world has moved people into very much that. Yeah. So the work that we do to a good degree with our students and with people who are attracted to us mm -hmm. is to help to, to break some elements of that enculturated yeah. perception yeah. Uh, of how the world can operate, what is possible. Yes. And, and to move away from the fear of certain things mm -hmm. yeah yeah mm. yeah but one thing that's really come home to me since particularly well it always has been but it's been particularly strong since i started deer trots last summer mm. is how much people need stillness mm. people don't know how to be still mm. and they're continuously hyper 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 mm -hmm. I mean, even when they're trying to be still, am I still yet? Am I still? Am I still? <laughs> and um, I'm really trying to work on ways, like several different paths, because not the same path works for everybody, as you well know. Um, so try this, try that, try that. Of Like, just do this and be still. And I got the current apprentices to just be still for five or 10 minutes with an animal <clears throat> mm. and not a plant. I wanted an animal because plants are actually in some ways easier. Um, <clears throat> but as it doesn't matter if you haven't got, you know, an animal living with you um, at the moment, you can go outside and there'll be an animal out there or there'll be, you know, you'll know there's a fox that come around your garden or there'll be birds in the bushes or whatever. And a couple of them <clears throat> have really tried it with the birds. And I mean, you know what birds are like. It's a little, 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 little in the trees and it's lovely. And then they just sit and they sit by the tree, under the tree, and they just go still. Mm. And they, those three of them were doing it with them. And they said, and the birds are still. 
and they look at mm. me. And it was like, yes, because mm. the birds are not used to humans being still. Mm. And then they see one that is, and you go, wow, have you seen this? Oh, that's <laughs> nice. And of course, you, you're there oozing all this lovely serenity, mm. and they feel it. And so they ooze serenity back at you. And you get this sort of lovely crossover thing. And um, that, was, that was really helped some of them to actually just be still. And it's, mm. if you can get your head around doing it at all, it's mm. not hard. Mm. Um, but the idea of still birds and be silly. Um, <laughs> you know, you've got to get over that one. As you say, in many ways, there, there are different entry points to be able to establish the stillness. Yeah. Um, because for I know for me personally, as, as, as you mentioned, uh, when the first time someone said to me around meditation, around stillness, just, just sit still. Yeah. <laughs> and for, I thought that, was, that wasn't my entry point. <laughs> so that was really difficult. Yeah. But through the years of trying a variety of different things that helped to enter into that, yeah. then I found that once I understood it, once I had my experience of it, then I could use different entry points in order to get there. Yes. So it's actually discovering your way of getting there, and then others will open for you. So you, yes. you don't get stuck in that one. This is the only way I can establish stillness. <laughs> once you're there, then it allows you then to trial out other areas, and you find that, oh, that's I can use that. And in this, and it's almost like the seasonal movement. Yes. In different seasons, yeah. different things will actually allow for entry or not. Yes. Yeah, mm. yeah, and it is that first getting that light bulb turning on, that click. Yes. Got it. Ah, that's what it is. There aren't really any words to describe it. There are lots of poetic words you can use around it, which give you a feel, um, mm. which might help you in. But when you suddenly got that stillness, you go, oh, that's it. And once you've got that, as you say, you can enter it from different places. But it's so actually one of my biggest jobs is and probably yours too, is actually just getting people to find that point for themselves. And then they can start to see the most beautiful world that their hearts can imagine. Because mm. you can't see it when you're fizzing around like this. Mm. It can happen. Uh, it, it's really, it's so important. In fact, I was just thinking about the, um, the song lines and everything. Mm. And, um, and I know one thing I'm, I feel I'm going to do, and that is just sit there and feel all the lines of energy that I can in the universe, mm. not just the earth, because they all connect. Mm. And they're all part of the same thing. And what came into my mind when you were talking was one of the, I think it's probably one of the Hubble pictures or something like that, of, of the cosmos and all the lines mm. and how it all threads together. Uh, mm. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And it's just seeing it whole for a moment. Mm. And then you are that channel for the energy to come through. Yes. Seeing it for and, and as we we work with our students, you know, some will see it, some will hear it. Yes. Some simply sense it. Mm. They get a sense of it in one way or another. There's a feeling for it and the yes. extending out through there, and that again is the entry point. Is the entry point to to that again? And for different people, it will be a different entry point to experiencing it. Then it allows for other ways of being able to get there. And it doesn't rely on, because lots of, I mean, you must have students, well, I never see anything. Mm, what, yes. what does happen for you? Well, <laughs> I hear it, I sense it, but that's not the same. It's just as good. I mean, I had one student who, who smelt it, was mm. her ah. nose told her. Uh, that, that's, uh, that is much more rare. I, yeah. I found that with, uh, particularly, uh, that's, that's very interesting, because I found that with, um, with students who come from an indigenous background, yes. that the other senses are more prominent yes. than just sight and hearing. Yeah. And so the smell, there's a taste. Um, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
I, I've got it a bit because I, I was brought up by a, an uncle who was a woodsman and my dad who who talked to animals and everything and was always out in the woods and well, what's that scent there then? Oh, it's a badger. Oh, mm. oh, oh, that's a mouse scent. Now, what's that little sound there? Well, that's a rabbit in the undergrowth. Mm. And, you know, from, from a little kid, so autopilot learning. Um, but most people are not, of course. Mm. Oh, and so I, I understand that. Um, but no, this girl, uh, she just got it. Mm. And um, I said, no, I, I get it all from smell. Well, mm. You know. And we were all sort of fascinated. So, so what does um, that form of serenity smell like to you? Can you describe it at all? And she could sort of give you a bit of herbaly stuff or um, sense of the earth after rain or something like that. And you go, yeah. oh, right. You know, so it's actually connecting. She helped connect other people's senses. But yeah. we don't use these enough. We use yeah. these. And we use these quite a bit. Um, but most of the time we use this and um, that doesn't work the same. <laughs> Not quite. No. No, no. So we're both going to have one hell of a midwinter, are we? It will be very interesting. It will be very interesting. So it'll be the, for me, it's the combination of the things that we were just describing before in, the, in our, our own personal piece and then there's the piece of the connecting to the larger to other efforts and other things that are going on to to bring greater uh, expression to the earth its own expression uh, where we can be uh, midwives and yes <laughs> yes things. yes well we are because we're, we're mm. helping something come to life yes yeah and um, and I, I love I love the idea of midwifing things anyway, and it is an old, old term, as you know. Hmm. Um, it, it really is lovely. No, I think that's very good, actually. I, I hope people pick up on that. Can, can you all pick up on that, everybody who's going to be listening to this? You're midwifing in the new year, or if you're south, you're midwifing yep. in the older year, the dark year. Yes. That I'm midwifing in the light year and you're midwifing in the dark year. Yes. But again, like those two coins we were saying <laughs> ages ago, it's the same. Mm. You won't have the one without the other. So. Mm. Yeah. Should we leave all these people alone there for that? Well, I think it's a perfect opportunity. So as you as you're working with things, for those who are watching us right now, as you're working with things. Um, remember, part of this, uh, of what we're working with is, is trusting nature more, trusting what is around us more and taking time and really being reconnected with that. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and this is a perfect opportunity to, if you haven't yet, or if you want to enhance what you're doing, take the time, take a moment at these changeovers. Yes. Because if some of the larger movements that, that it, it allows with some things to be more obvious, because yes. there's such large movements. And we do need it to be a bit obvious because we're so unused to it that unless sort of we've had Steven Spielberg on the special effects team doing the sort of <laughs> stunner for us, go, did I really see that? Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Yeah. Well, Chip, I shall just stop the recording now, I think, <laughs> and we'll leave everybody be. And um, take care. Actually, we're going, to see, we're going to see them next year, aren't we? Yes, most definitely. Because we have a few other things to chat about. We still haven't hit on to the dragons yet. Because no, we've got to get on to those dragons. That yeah. comes to the, the rainbow serpent and there are other energies that will come into it. We'll get on to that. And um, yeah, there's, there's a few other things on the horizon. And we'll get and we'll see our, our, our compatriot, uh, Fiona. <laughs> I think she'll be back next year, but at the moment she is seriously well over the top of her head in stuff that has to be done. And um, so we're letting her do it, which is, mm. you know, okay. You know, mm. she may not be thoroughly enjoying it, but at least things are happening for her, which she needs. So we will see you all in the new year after okay. the 25th of December. Most definitely. <laughs>
<laughs> so I'll just stop the recording. <laughs>